In this video, I'm going to show you the five key design principles to create top tier infographics. Think of this like your guide to capturing people's attention on demand because great infographics aren't just made by accident. There's a repeatable process that goes into designing an infographic that grabs people's attention, retains it, and turns that attention into action. So let's explore the process and start with our first design principle. Rule number one is minimalism, which is one of the biggest mistakes that you're going to see when you're looking at infographics that aren't doing what they need to be doing. So here, let's look at our first example. This is a super messy example. I have no idea what we're trying to say with this graphic. Even with the description on the bottom that tells me that this is borrowers on the left and lenders on the right, there's too many acronyms. There's too many boxes. There's far too many lines and icons and things that I can't follow or understand for me to be able to follow this graphic. So let's go to something else that has a similar topic, finance information, but is a much cleaner and more minimal version that we can actually follow. So if we look at this template, we can see very clearly what we're trying to understand. I don't need someone to explain it to me. I can see that I'm looking at monthly priorities and quarterly priorities. I don't need someone to explain it because it's nice and clean and minimal. It's saying just what it needs to say. So this visual doesn't just look better. It actually communicates better because infographics aren't just meant to be a data dump. They're meant to help communicate a message quickly and efficiently. Now let's move on to rule number two. Did you know that there are psychological principles that describe how the human eye perceives visual elements? This to me is pretty wild. These principles are known as gestalt principles and they can be used to make our information sharing far more effective when used properly. There are seven principles in total, but two are the most important when we're talking about designing infographics. And those are proximity and similarity. Proximity is when things are close together. Your eye wants to naturally group anything that's close together, whether it's related or not. So that's why understanding proximity is important. But similarity is things that are the same in color, shape, or size. So let's take a look at a couple examples so we can understand what doesn't work when it comes to proximity and similarity and what you can do to leverage it to make your infographic look great. So if we look at this graphic, I have just a bunch of random shapes on a page. And even though I have circles and squares and stars, you might not see them as important to go together because they're not grouped together. So there's not really a flow on this page, it's a little bit chaotic. But if we go to this page where I've grouped the items all together, your first instinct is actually to see this all as one group, even though the colors are different and the shapes are different. If I want to take this principle a little bit further, I can move these circles over and I can move these stars over. And now you can see that since their proximity is to each other in those lines, you actually see three different groupings instead of seeing one larger grouping. So now let's apply the similarity principles to this even more. So let's Let's change all of our circles to pink and let's change all of our stars to purple and all of our squares to yellow. Do you see how much easier that is to follow and how you could leverage that for sharing your information? So it doesn't just have to be graphics, but when we group things that are meant to be viewed together together and we make them similar in weight, in color, in shape, then we make it very easy for our viewer to understand what we're trying to share with them. Next, let's look at rule number three, which is white space. White space is simply the space between elements on the page and it doesn't have to be white and it isn't wasted. It's what gives your design structure. It helps to guide your eye and it makes the content feel calm instead of chaotic. It's all about giving your content room to breathe. And sometimes it is a little bit difficult to get right. It might make you uncomfortable at first because you want to get all of your information on the page, but your information won't be shareable if it's too crowded and people can't follow it. So let's take a look at some examples. So in this example, we're trying to share the same piece of information. Our view on the left has appropriate white space and our view on on the right doesn't. And you can see it just even from the start of the graphic. On the right, I'm not likely to read this common doubts on blood donation. And so I'm not even going to be sure what I'm looking at below. So with the gap at the top of the graphic on the left side, I can read that before I dive into the topic. So I understand what these quotes are referencing. Next, I see that I have space between the icons and the words. I don't have that here. And it makes it really hard for my eye to follow these icons quickly and 
and then read the words. So adding that space between the icons and the words is really important. And then we have actually excess white space here. So making sure that we aren't using white space where it doesn't need to be because it's giving us something that we don't want to look at. So here, this is making this information seem irrelevant and kind of an afterthought because it's stuck down at the bottom right versus here where it's actually stacked in columns and has nice visible icons so that I can see that information and they have nice spacing between them where here the spacing just seems off and it just doesn't work on the page. So play around with your use of white space because when you use it properly, it shouldn't be distracting. It should just make it easier for your viewers to see what they need to see. Now on to rule number four, use design systems to stay consistent. Now what is a design system? It's pretty simple. You'll pick your fonts, your colors, your styles for your brand, and you'll use them consistently. That's your system. Now why is this important? If you use the same two to three fonts, a few consistent colors, and other elements that become recognizable, you'll build visual recognition and trust with your audience and your information. It will also keep all your infographics clean and consistent rather than some new idea each time, which could potentially lead to a mess and confusion. So here is an example of a chaotic use of fonts and colors. This is meant to be a simple graphic that tells the employees what the steps are to access their benefits. But when I look at it, I have three different fonts, even just at the top. I have serif font, I have some sort of script font in all caps, and then I have a sans serif font, all with multiple colors. Then I go into these steps with all of these different colors, and it's really hard to follow what I'm supposed to be doing. My eye jumps to the pink first because it's really bright, and then back to this pink because those are consistent. So it just isn't a great experience for the viewer. But if we go here to this same exact template, but adjusted with my brand colors, now I can see that I am looking at the employee reward program and that I am taking three steps. And it's very simple for me to get through the information because my eyes can rest. They aren't just trying to follow the chaos of the fonts and the colors. Once you've established those design rules, it'll be so simple to just apply them to every single new thing that you create. And our last rule is hierarchy. You're going to use size, weight, and color to guide the viewer's eye to key insights because we want to make sure that our viewer sees the most important information first and color, size, and weight are all really important in achieving that. What do you see when you see this graphic? Most likely you actually see first read this, then you go back and you see first you're going to read this, then you're going to read this, only then will you read this. And if you were to ask someone, what order do you read things on a page? They would probably tell you top to bottom, but because of the way that this is laid out using the colors and the weight of the fonts and the lighter colors in this top font, your eye follows this in the way that it's meant to be read. The most important thing is the largest, the boldest, and has that change in color, then the next size, and then the lighter colored font with the smallest size. So let's look at another example that helps to demonstrate this. If we look at this first image, we can see that the whale and the diver are essentially the same size. And because of that, neither of them stand out. I just don't really see anything except the word before. Where in the second image with the whale much larger and the diver appropriately sized relative to the whale, I can actually follow my eye through this graphic and it makes much more sense to look at. So when we think about the application of this in an infographic, we wanna make sure that the things that are meant to be seen first are seen first, that they have the most important weight, visual cues, that they are easy for the viewer to see. And here's a great example. So this is a note on recruiting and workplace trends. And the first thing that my eye goes to is this graphic with the three charts. And I can see that the number one message that they want me to take away from this is that location doesn't matter. Now, once I have processed that, I can keep going through this graphic and it gives me nice, bold headlines so that I know what else I need to take away. And then we get to those last few things with some more visuals and again, bold headlines. If you get hierarchy right, you can be pretty sure that your viewer is going to get the message that you want them to get. A good double check that you can use if you're trying to make sure that you've done this is to say, if I only have someone's attention for five seconds, what do I want to make sure that they actually get out of this piece of information and design around that? That will help you to be successful with hierarchy. But the next skill you need is to nail the presentation part, how you actually go about presenting to an audience, either with infographics or a slideshow. So click here to check out the next video where we go over five things that you can do to immediately improve your presentation skills so you can crush your next media presentation no matter what or where it is. I'll see you over there.